The robbery took place here at the Byright Market on East River Road at 7.20 this morning. This is the truck involved in the robbery. The $10.8 million in cash was supposed to be delivered to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York in Buffalo. An hour after the mammoth heist, about a dozen police investigators were at the Armored Motor Service of America headquarters trying to piece the story together. Cameras were kept outside company gates, but we saw the two guards being escorted by police. One male guard, who was the driver, and his female partner were about to be quizzed in detail concerning the specifics of the holdup. Neither of the two guards are being identified. The specifics may not be forthcoming for some time, but this is what we know now. The armored truck owned by Armored Motor Service of America left its post on Scottsville Road. From there, the guard stopped at the Byright Market on East River. While one guard was in the store, police say two men forced their way into the truck at gunpoint and tied up the driver. They then subdued the other guard when she returned. The owner of the store, Keith Frank, says the guards were not regulars at the market, but did stop there frequently. They stop very irregularly, maybe three times a week, and then I don't see them for a week, and then, then I'll see them again. The same ones or just anybody from the Amsa place? Uh, usually it's the same one, but there have been other guards. The armored truck was driven to this grassy field on Bailey Road. This map shows the route they took to the field less than a mile away. This field soon became the main focus of the investigation. At least a half dozen sheriff's deputies combed the area with the help of a police dog. You can still see the tire tracks from where the robbers parked the truck. This is where they made their frantic transfer of money into another vehicle, possibly a gray van. Police say the robbers dropped plenty of bank receipts and other papers in their haste to make that transfer. Investigators scoured the area looking for leads for most of the morning. How about in terms of uh, the, the suspects, where are they right now? We have no idea. Uh, we're still determining that. Uh, we're in a stages right now of interviewing both the victims and getting the complete information on the case. The guards eventually freed themselves and drove the armored truck back to their Scottsville Road base. The suspects, meanwhile, took off from Bailey Road and escaped on the throughway headed east. Paul Holly, News Source 13. The Sheriff's Department and the FBI concede they have no suspects, nor even a good description of who robbed the armored car. They aren't even sure how many robbers there were. As robberies go, this one will be tough to solve. Well, it was one that uh, obviously was well planned. But... Stores like Wegmans and area banks use armored cars every day to move large amounts of money back and forth. Most armored cars don't carry as much as was stolen today. Today's heist hit the big run, the shipment taking excess money from a variety of local banks to the Federal Reserve Bank in Buffalo. Law enforcement sources familiar with the armored car business say it is a regular run, but one in which the schedules are a closely guarded secret. But these sources also say the armored car business is competitive and salaries for guards and drivers aren't much above minimum wage. That often leads to high turnover. One of the AMSA employees today had only six months on the job, the other had just a year. Sources also say the armored car employees are sometimes lulled into complacency. The driver and guard this morning made what appears to be an unauthorized stop to get coffee and donuts. While the trucks themselves are heavily protected, law enforcement sources say the problems usually arise out of human error. It's important for you to know that we don't have uh, suspects uh, in this case, uh, at least at this juncture, and uh, we don't have an explicit description of the suspects. Whoever they are, the two men who robbed this armored car knew exactly what they were doing. The heist was so smoothly orchestrated, no one else knew what was happening. Nobody said anything, and there were people in and out. It was totally, nobody knew anything. Our Paul Holly talked with the owner of a shop where one of the armored car drivers stopped immediately before the robbery. She came in, she ordered a sandwich, we made it for her, we cashed her out. Minutes later, the robbers stormed her vehicle. The vehicle was... Uh taken to this location uh, here on Bailey Road where uh, the two victims inside the armored car were uh, apparently tied up and the money was removed. Our cameras caught the guards as they were being put into police cars. This is the woman guard and this is her partner. Their names have not been made public. The scene of the crime was hectic today. Specially trained dogs were brought in to help track down the robbers while investigators checked for fingerprints and other clues that might reveal where the criminals have gone and who they are. As far as specific details about the heist are concerned, the answers to many of those questions are vague. There are a lot of questions, obviously, about uh, the manner in which uh, the heist came mm -hmm. off. 
And uh, except for a statement that uh, we had made earlier that it appeared to be well planned, I think our investigation will produce a lot more as we get into it. Investigators say the suspects took advantage of the fact that only one guard remained in the armored car while the other guard was inside the Byright store. An open porthole window in the vehicle provided the perfect opportunity. The suspects shoved a gun inside, one of the keys to pulling off the heist. Maloney admits this will be a tough robbery to solve. Uh, the bills are non-traceable. In fact, there are so many unanswered questions, the sheriff is appealing to the public for help. I would ask the community if anyone out there has any information relative to the robbery, and particularly in the area of Bailey Road or on River Road at the Byright store, we certainly would like to hear from you at 428-5310. Investigators are working closely with the Armored Motor Service of America and the two guards in charge of the vehicle to find out what procedures, if any, were violated. It's clear the $10.8 million, mostly in 20s and 50s, was not marked, but was it insured? In terms of liability, I frankly uh, would be uh, inappropriately commenting because I, I don't know how the insurance laws read on these kinds of things. AMSA officials are not commenting on the heist, but police say it is not unusual for large amounts of money to be transported to the Federal Reserve in Buffalo. And how will the suspects unload such a tremendous amount of money, most likely in small quantities and very carefully? The Byright store, where the holdup took place, is nestled between a number of residential streets and sits across from RIT College. It is a quiet, working-class neighborhood. Residents here are in shock and disbelief after $10 million was stolen right in their backyards. People are really shocked it could happen in a quiet neighborhood like this. Don't believe it could happen. Not here. Why not? Not in this rural setting. It's just something that... Uh, you don't expect. Neighbors in the area say it wasn't unusual to see the armored truck parked outside or to see the guards inside picking up snacks. On this day, one guard stayed inside the truck behind the wheel as the other guard came inside. She first stopped here to pick up coffee. She then quickly made her way over to the deli section for sandwiches for what she assumed would be a quick trip to Buffalo. I've seen the truck here stop many, many times in the morning when I go to work. It's more like a habit, I guess, what, is what they do. The guards were taken to a nearby field, bound and gagged. Cindy Schwassman says that at about 7.10, she saw an armored car driving along her street. My nephew and I watched it all the way down the road because he didn't go over 20 miles an hour. And I was kidding him at the time, saying that, you know, we wouldn't want to put our money in it. Traffic at the Byright store was steady. Outside, police cars were quite evident. The store has become the talk of the town, the talk of many a town. Calls have been coming in from every major television station and newspaper in the country, wanting to know exactly what happened. It is the same question residents are asking. Officials familiar with the armored car business say the crew on board the ill-fated truck may have violated two basic security rules. Their stop at the buy right market had become something of a routine, and that made them a potential target. Security officials say crews are told to vary their stops and the times they are made to avoid falling into a pattern. We're not sure whether it was planned specifically for yesterday or it was planned for the next time the truck stops, we're ready for them. We Sheriff's investigators are also looking at whether the gun port on the passenger side was broken or deliberately left open for ventilation. It should have been closed. But if you look closely at this armored car that we found today, you can see the gun port is partially open, making the truck vulnerable. During yesterday's robbery, a thief stuck a shotgun barrel through the gun port and ordered the driver to open the door while the unarmed guard was in the market. Questions remain about why the woman guard climbed back into the truck. I'm not so sure she saw that he was in trouble at that point in time. That's, that's part of what we need to interview and re-interview those employees. Her, her perception wasn't that there was distress. The female was uh, very quickly tied up, blindfolded, and the driver was basically told to drive and not turn around, that if he did, uh, he would be killed. The gunman then directed the armored car driver to a farm lane off Bailey Road. To show you how long it took, we're going to drive the route and 
see how long it takes us. It wasn't very far. We covered the distance going at or under the speed limit in just over two minutes. Back in the field, the driver was tied up and blindfolded. His pistol was taken along with the shotgun for the guard. Police dogs later found the weapons. Two sets of keys to the truck were also recovered. The money weighing 15 to 1,700 pounds and packed in bins was then unloaded into another vehicle. The thief or thieves had to move quickly because only 40 minutes had passed between the time the car was seen at the market and the time the guards freed themselves and drove back to the AMSA headquarters. Sheriff's investigators can't explain why the crew didn't radio for help. They also don't have any idea where the suspects are. Many of us wish we were faced with the problem of how do you dispose of $10 million in cash, but let's face it, it could be a problem. You can't just bring it down to the bank here and have them put it in your savings account. They're going to get suspicious. If you try to buy a new car, a new boat, or even a house with cash, the government's going to wonder where all that money's coming from. Jim Redmond, News Source 13. The investigation has been continuing constantly since yesterday's holdup. Earlier this morning, officers set up roadblocks at the scenes of the crime, trying to come up with any lead that could help them put the puzzle together. While that questioning was going on, there was already talk of a massive reward. Details of that quarter million dollar reward were outlined at this afternoon's news conference. Uh, Lloyd's of London uh, is offering a $250,000 reward to anyone in the community who uh, gives us information leading to the arrest, conviction, and the recovery of a substantial amount of the money that was stolen. Meanwhile, officials from AMSA have remained tight-lipped since the robbery. Representatives on hand at the news conference refused to comment or even give their names, instead choosing to peek in from the doorway. This afternoon, after the discovery of the van used in the heist, investigators from the FBI and the Sheriff's Department say the investigation is moving along quickly and that the case will be solved. We do have some good leads that we're following up on, but we're not there yet. Is there any chance, do you, do you think something like this uh, so elaborate could be solved by, uh, by these agencies? Yes, we think so. As for the reward money put up by Lloyds of London, the insurance company says that procedure is commonplace for a crime of this magnitude, one that compares to some of the largest heists in the world. Obviously, for $10 million, uh, uh, $250,000 is a sizable reward when you consider it's for information leading to the arrest, conviction, and recovery. To help hurry along what investigators say will be a certain arrest and conviction, assistance has been requested from every available law enforcement officer. I think we've assigned more men to this case than any other case in my 30, 30 years in this organization. Paul Holly, News Source 13. A $250,000 reward is now being offered for information in the case that leads to an arrest and recovery of the $10 million. Earlier this morning, police returned to the scene of the robbery on East River Road to talk to drivers who may have seen something unusual yesterday. Sheriff's deputies say they've gotten many tips and interviewed many people. They also say they are not ruling anything out and that people are being questioned both inside and outside the armored car company. We also spent some time this morning uh, interviewing people at the Byright Market who might have been regular customers, uh, interviewing people that would have driven along Bailey Road yesterday morning at the time in question. We have no comment, no comment. sir. Guards Please. posted outside AMSA's office on Scottsville Road are still not talking, but a former AMSA guard from Buffalo says he isn't surprised at all that something like this happened. Uh, some of the people that worked there, not all of them, I wouldn't even give a squirt gun to, let alone, you know, uh, have them responsible for uh, $10 million worth of a shipment.
they were questioning all the neighbors to ask if we had heard anything last night between 6 and 7, if we had heard anybody drop the van off or any commotion or anything back here, which we weren't home to hear. We didn't hear anything, and I didn't notice the van until um, this afternoon when there was all the commotion. It's been around, I, I think I've seen it around two, three, maybe four weeks in this area. But I, I thought nothing of it either because people, you know, take plates off their vehicles all the time. They're talking about the heist in the city. Everybody thinks it's an inside job. And with the money not marked, I don't see how you're going to be able to trace it unless you get some evidence on the people's that did the job. I wish I would have some of that money. <laughs> I wouldn't buy things right off and make it obvious and bring attention to myself, but gradually I would build up to having new different things, probably relocate. <laughs> Inside job, definitely. Professional, definitely. If it wasn't planned, I don't think they would have got away with it. They're talking about it in the suburbs. I mean, I got $10 million, man. Everybody come near the thing, I'm gonna go, hey, go away. Frank Michael and his family have been talking about the robbery since it happened. They, too, think it's an inside job. Nobody saw anything. I mean, they had to have it planned out when they're gonna stop, when they're gonna leave, where the vicinity in which it was taking place. I mean, it was all just, you know, so secluded. Myself, when uh, I get, uh, or I am in charge of something, I make sure that uh, things go right. Not that uh, somebody stops for a sandwich or uh, doesn't do what they're supposed to do and uh, leaves the thing. They're even talking about the robbery on the baseball field. I think the guys who did that, you know, with um, the, the all the unmarked bills and everything, if, if they don't catch them, they're going to be living pretty good for a long time. You know, and, uh, that part I wish it was me. <laughs> Michael Blow is happy for the thieves. Somebody's got it. I'm glad it's better than the lottery. It's really. Nobody got hurt. Really? Insurance money gets paid, so I'm glad somebody did it. The mystery of the heist is intriguing people throughout town.